Goro is a good boy. Not the kind you give fudge to, like in music class, because that will kill him. I think. I'm not sure. Anyways, he's here to give your team a bunch of buffs. I guess you could call him a support dog. But this support dog's vest isn't the easiest to put on. Well, it's not that it's difficult to put on, really. It's just that lots of people don't really understand the best method. But the good news is that I figured out all of the bits and pieces and put them together in a simple to understand way for you in this video. So today, we're going to talk about how Goro works, where he's good, and how to build him. Before we get started, I just wanted to let you guys know that I do go live on Twitch a few days a week at twitch.tv slash Braxophone, and it would mean the world to me if you followed there and then subscribe right below this video if you're interested in seeing more Genshin content. Really helps me out in the algorithm and lets me know you guys like the content. With all that being said, my name is Braxophone and let's get right into the video. We're going to start off with Goro's kit. Goro's elemental skill and elemental burst are extremely wordy, so I'm going to try to keep this really concise. Goro's elemental skill puts down an AoE that gives flat defense buffs and extra buffs based on how many Geo characters you have in your team. If you have two Geo characters, it gives stagger resistance as well as the defense buff, which is just general quality of life for finishing combos without getting interrupted, and having three Geos in your team will give you a 15% Geo damage buff. Any character who leaves the AoE keeps the buff for two more seconds, and his AoE lasts for 10 seconds. Since his cooldown is 10 seconds, that means you can have it on the field very consistently. Goro's elemental burst is actually basically the same as his skill, except the area of effect follows you around and does damage on cast and once every one and a half seconds. So basically he's just dealing damage over time. If Goro's elemental skill is active when you use his burst, it gets rid of his skill, so these buffs can't stack and you want to make sure not to use both his burst and his skill together. It costs 80 energy, which is really expensive, and it lasts for 9 seconds. For both his burst and skill, the defense can be snapshotted by Ito and Noel, but Albedo's skill will snapshot both the geo damage and defense, and snapshot in this case just means that the character will maintain that stat through the duration of their burst or skill. Goro's first passive gives the party 25% more defense whenever he uses his burst, and passive number 2 increases Goro's skill and burst damage by a portion of his defense. So overall, Goro's kit actually scales a lot based off of his defense just because of his passive and his elemental burst using part of his defense to add to his damage, and that will be explained later in the artifacts section. As far as talent priority goes, you want to level up his skill first, because the higher level it is, the more defense it gives overall. Outside of that, you don't really need to level his burst but you can just do that to make it do a little bit more damage. And if you like living on the edge, you can level his normal attacks, though it's not super necessary because you're not going to really have him out on the field to do damage anyways. And for talent level up materials, he takes light scrolls and he needs specters. So real quick, before I tell you Goro's best weapons, I want to talk about his constellations because they're really relevant to his build. So Constellation 1 decreases Goro's skill cooldown by 2 seconds when a character in your party deals Geo damage in his AoE. It can only happen once every 10 seconds, but overall it lowers the cooldown of his elemental skill. Overall, it's not super necessary, but it gives you a little bit more flexibility when you use his elemental skill. Goro's Constellation 2 makes his burst last an extra 3 seconds maximum just by having a character pick up crystallized shields, which is fairly easy to do and makes this constellation pretty decent. You get 1 extra second per crystal Crystallized Shield, but since you're most likely going to be using Goro on a mostly Geo team, you're not going to have any trouble getting Crystallized Shards. Goro's Constellation 3 increases his skill by 3 levels. His Constellation 4 gives him healing potential by making the active character inside of his Elemental Burst AoE heal by 50% of Goro's defense. This honestly isn't a lot of healing because Goro's base defense is extremely low, but between defense buffs and shield shards, it does add up over time. I wouldn't use it to rely on Goro as a dedicated healer, but it's a really solid bonus for your carry. Constellation 5 raises Goro's burst level by 3, and Constellation 6 is actually insanely good for Geo teams. Goro gives all Geo damage on all party members a crit damage increase for 12 seconds after using his skill or burst. In double Geo, he gives 20% crit damage, in triple Geo, 40%. It's easy to activate and super strong, and if you're a Geo main, you'll definitely want this one. One last thing that I thought was kind of disappointing is that some of Goro's constellations feel like they should have been a part of his kit to begin with, and because of that, I think Goro's overall constellation potential got really lowered. For example, if his Constellation 4 had been initially worked into his kit, the new Constellation 4 could have either made healing apply to the whole party or use 100% of his defense, just so that Goro would have more reasons to use him other than being a defense buffer. That's just my opinion. Either way, Goro's Constellations are good, with a C2 being good comfort Constellations and C6 being just ridiculously strong for Geo. So now that we talked about Constellations and kit, we can talk about weapons, which are going to be very important going forward for Goro's build. On screen now is a weapon tier list that's going to feature all of the weapons that you need to know about for Goro, and which ones are going to be the best. So at the top, as you can see, this is Favonius Warbow. This is going to be your best in slot for Goro, almost regardless of whatever build you're running, because he needs a lot of energy. Favonius Warbow gives you energy recharge, and it also gives you energy particles whenever you crit. And though this has a cooldown on how often the particles will generate when you crit, it's still very, very good. It has a high energy recharge stat, and you should absolutely use this weapon over anything else. And then below that, we have use this if you don't have Favonius, but you should have Favonius because it's literally free in the Archon quest tier, and in this tier is going to be Elegy for the End and Sacrificial Bow. Now, 
Now, I would not recommend using these because Favonius Warbo is going to be free in the Archon Quest, but you can use them if you absolutely have to. Elegy is going to be really good because it buffs the rest of your team. But the downside to Elegy is that it buffs your attack and not everyone on your team is going to need that attack buff. And the reason Sacrificial Bow actually comes after Elegy for the end is because the energy recharge on Sacrificial Bow isn't actually super great. And against boss enemies where you can't hit multiple enemies at once because Goro's elemental skill only procs one time, you're not guaranteed to get those extra particles or the elemental skill reset. So with that being said, Sacrificial Bow is less optimal than using Favonius Warbow. And Favonius Warbow is also faster to set up in a lot of cases because all you need to do is crit once. And if you just build a lot of crit rate on him, you're going to do that really consistently. Whereas Sacrificial Bow may or may not proc. If you go down here to C tier, you have Viridescent Hunt. And the reason this one's in here is actually just because it groups enemies. And then below this is going to be every other bow in the game. You don't really want to touch these for Goro because none of these are support weapons the way that Favonius is. And he just needs so much energy. There's basically no reason to use anything but Favonius. And I highly recommend this weapon over anything else. To be honest, that's really all you need to know about weapons for Garo. He's like Toma, where you can use other energy recharge weapons on him, but because the Favonius set just gives you so many particles by itself, it helps you compensate for characters that generate very low amounts of particles. But now that we've talked about his best weapons, we can move on to the build, and the build section is a little complicated, but I'm going to try to explain why I do everything that I do in the build section. So this build is probably going to shock most of you. In my opinion, the best set for Garo is a four-star set, and I, I know it seems weird, but just hear me out. The four-piece Exile set gives you 20% energy recharge and the four piece gives you six total energy to your whole party whenever you use his elemental burst. Six energy doesn't seem like much but in most content you're using Goro in, you're not going to be speed running abyss which means that you'll likely cycle through burst a few times which means you'll get way more than six energy by the end of it. In addition to that it's to your whole party it's not just one character so that's super helpful. There's decent geo batteries in the game but the only one you'll really use with Ito is Albedo and in comparison to what other artifact set options you have for him this one is the one that generally will provide the most overall value to your team. Husk damage isn't that great on Goro, and Noblesse is fine, but it isn't as useful to defense scaling characters like Albedo, Noel, or Ito, who you'll be using with Goro in most cases. As far as stats, you're going to want an energy recharge sand basically no matter what, and I'll explain that in a minute. And then for the goblet, you'll want geo damage, and for the circlet, you want defense or crit rate. To choose between defense or crit rate, you basically just want to look at your sub stats, because the reason you want crit rate in the first place is to make sure Favonius Warbow can proc. But you don't need a ton of it either. I've been fine at around 40 crit rate, so if you're able to get that with sub stats, you can actually just run a defense circle it on him instead. You can also choose to run him with a defense goblet instead of a geo damage goblet if you don't have a geo damage one. The difference is pretty minimal. It's just that geo technically does more damage, so I recommend that over defense. If your Goro is C4, you may be wondering about using him for healing with a healing percent circlet. The biggest problem with this is that his healing is based off of his defense, and even though we build defense on him, his base defense is 648 at level 90. Yeah. For perspective, Chi Chi's base defense at level 90 is 922. Goro's defense is very low, and taking 50% of just that number with the defense goblet is nearly the same as building it with a maiden set. Seriously, maidens brings his healing up by like 12% total, and you have to give up defense for it. Overall, because of his low scaling and because his heal only affects the active character, you should focus on defense over healing in my opinion. Also, replace the geodamage goblet with a defense one for sure if you want him to heal for more. Now, I know I mentioned that you should always be running an energy reach charge sands, and here is why. I've said before that Goro needs a lot of energy to function, and the main reason for that is because his skill only generates two particles at a time. And for a support character like him that wants to be using his skill and burst often, but not taking up too much field time, he needs to be able to generate tons of energy, catching the very few particles he or other characters generate. In order for Goro to function consistently, you want to get him to around 210 energy recharge, and to hit that, you either need insane energy recharge substats or an ER sands. I also figure I'm going to get some comments about this, so I want to answer this question question as well. What if I want to build Goro for damage? Is it that bad? Well, the quick answer is just that Goro's damage isn't great and isn't a core function of his kit. For reference, a Goro built for damage over time will do less damage than Toma at similar investment, and this comparison is actually pretty good because both these characters are supports that need to use the Favonius weapon at the least, and most of their damage is coming from their burst. Goro's damage output is just generally low even if you invest into him for it, so it's best to have him funnel energy for your team and at C4 provide some healing since he'll be able to increase your team's comfiness and overall DPS just just by creating more uptime for your bursts because of the exile set. You're going to see videos of people max hitting with Goro over the next few days, getting 35k charged attacks and trying to one shot bosses, but that isn't really representative of normal gameplay that'll help you clear end game content. If you do want to build him to deal some damage while also supporting you, you can use the four piece husk set, but I would still keep the same stats with an energy recharge sands, geo or defense goblet, and a crit rate circlet. That's basically everything you need to know about building him. Just in summary, in case you guys maybe got confused or lost or you just need to be reminded, my recommendation 
recommended build for Goro is to run 4 piece Exile with an Energy Recharge Sands, a Geo Damage or Defense Goblet, and a Crit Rate or Defense Circlet. And the difference that's going to be made is whether or not you need the Crit Rate for Favonius to proc. If you do have really good Crit Rate subs, you might not actually need to run a Crit Rate Circlet, and then you can run Defense instead. And for substats, prioritize Energy Recharge up to about 210%, and then focus on Defense and Crit Rate. But now, what do you do with the dog once you've got them all vested up? Well, it's time to take him out and actually have him support. It's time to talk about teams. So we're going to be looking at some different ways to play Goro in different teams and see where he functions most optimally. The first team that I want to show you guys is Goro, Ito or Noel, Albedo, and then a flex spot. This team is actually one that I showed in my Ito guide, but I'm showing it here again because it's also one of Goro's best teams. In this team, you can either have C6 Noel or Ito as a main carry, and they're both going to receive buffs from Goro, as well as Albedo also getting defense and geo damage buff to snapshot with his flower. And the flex spot can be anyone from Diona to Fischl to Chi. In most cases, you're going to want to have that flex spot be a healer, but when Rift Wolves go away and we're not constantly having our life siphoned, you can choose to run someone that's going to help batter you better, like Fischl or Raiden even. But unfortunately, this is a very expensive team, so I want to show you guys a couple less expensive ones. Like for example, this next team is Goro, Noel, Ningguang, and a flex. And this is going to not necessarily need any five stars, but of course, five stars do help these teams get better. For example, you could replace Noel with Ito, and you're still going to get a lot of value out of Ningguang using her to burst out damage and getting the 15% geo damage from Goro. And additionally, the stagger resistance for Ningguang is going to be very, very helpful because Ningguang can't move while she attacks, or if she does move, she's very, very slow. And that stagger resistance will help her be able to cast whatever she's doing. The flex in this team is very much the same as the first team, where it can be Fischl, Diona, Raiden, Chi Chi. And in this team, Bennett actually sees a little bit more value because he's able to buff Ningguang, who does scale off of attack. So you could also use him as an option. And then the third team that I wanted to show you guys is Goro, Albedo, Yoimiya, and Sengcho. So you might be wondering why I forced Yoimiya into a comp, and that's mostly just because she's adorable, but also extra resistance to interruption from Goro helps her a ton. Yoimiya is a character that absolutely needs to finish her attack combo to get the most out of her damage and to not have her vaporizes interrupted or get off tempo. Using a team like this allows you to focus on shield shards and Goro's skill to stop Yoimiya from getting interrupted, and Singcho also helps with the same thing and provides a tiny bit of healing as well as a ton of damage. This team is one where Goro could actually benefit from using Archaic Petra as well, since since he automatically picks up a shield shard when his burst activates, and that would help buff Yoimiya or Singcho at any given time. 35% damage bonus is actually a really significant jump, and I think a lot of people underestimate that. You can apply the Archaic Petra argument to other teams as well, but generally speaking, I don't recommend running only double Geo on a Goro team, and that's the only time I would recommend using Petra in the first place. But outside of those teams, there's not really a lot of other ones I can recommend, mostly because Goro is very, very specific and fits into a particular niche that there aren't a lot of characters for as of this moment. So while he definitely is a good unit within his own niche. I think it'll be a better unit if we see more defense scaling characters in the future, like maybe Varka, although that I'm, I'm kind of hoping Varka scales off of HP because then someone will finally be able to use the bell. But just know that the good boy is good in his own niche. And if you're building an all geo team that he will actually be very, very beneficial to you and is definitely worth pulling for if you are going for that kind of team. With all that being said, guys, that is basically everything you need to know about Goro. And so I hope that this guide helped you either build him or make a team around him or just understand his kit better. Honestly, if I got any of those things, that would be awesome. He's not really too complex of a character. He's just not very straightforward to build. And so I hope that I was able to clarify some things for you. As usual in the comments, let me know what you like about this patch and what you like about Ito and Goro. And if you like the video, it really helps me out if you leave a thumbs up before you go ahead and click off. So that way YouTube knows that you like the video and that it's a good one. Thank you guys so much for all the support and I will catch you guys on the next one. Peace.